Hi there. My name is Shannon. This is Whiskey and Wool. Welcome to my Knitter's Life series, season three. Um, this year has not been what I thought it would be. <laughs> We're halfway through and I am like still reeling, I feel. Um, yeah, season three, episode like not even double digits, I think. I think this might be nine. Maybe we made it to 10. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, this is going to be a knit focused edition of Knitter's Life. Um, I called it Knitter's Life so that I could share life stuff as well as uh, my knitting and my knitting journey. And like, cause sometimes knitting and life are wrapped together, right? I mean, often they're wrapped together. So to just talk about knitting without the life, without the context of life, seems a little strange to me. So I decided to do this Knitter's Life series. Um, I wanted to share with you a little drink that I prepared for myself. This is an April Spritz. And these beautiful glasses made from Summer in a Bottle wine bottles. So Summer in the Bottle is a rosé wine. I think it's also white that is local to me. It's from Wolfer Estate on Long Island, New Jersey, um, Long Island, New York, <laughs> Long Island, New Jersey. See how I did that? There is Long Island, New Jersey, but there's no vineyard there. There is a vineyard on Long Island way out um, in the Hamptons region, and it's beautiful, a gorgeous estate, and I, it is my favorite rosé, so a friend gifted me these glasses. They are so pretty. I cannot find summer in a bottle. I think I know where to get some. It's hard to get once 4th of July weekend is over. It's pretty hard to get their rosé, but I have an idea of where I can get it. So yeah, I'm having a little April spritz. Not my not a traditional April spritz, which is a 3 to 1 ratio of April sorry, Prosecco, April and club soda. I just do a glass of Prosecco over ice with a splash of soda and um, probably like a half ounce or so of Aperol just for flavor. Because um, I love the flavor, but it's a little too sweet with the 3 to 1 ratio for me. Um, yeah, welcome, welcome. I uh, do not have a whiskey or gin chat today. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be bringing that back anytime soon. Um, I do have the samples from the countdown calendars that I got, the gin and whiskey countdown calendars that I got in um, 2022, but I've given a lot of them away to my sons and you know other people offered them when they come over because yeah I just decided that it's a lot of work and my head is full of a lot of other things so I'm just gonna not force myself to do that so I may do them from time to time um, but I'm not gonna make it a regular segment for the time being but I do want to talk to you about my knitting. So let me begin with what I am wearing. And oh, Martha is back. I don't think you've seen Martha for a while. She is also wearing a finished object. Um, I am wearing one that you have not seen. It was a very fast knit. It is Look at My Holes by James in Watts. And it is a really cute little um, summer, summery top. I've knitted out of Ching fiber. Um, I don't think it's her dashing DK. I think it's her regular DK in the colorway Fizzwiz, which I think was a color from last summer. She had it pretty recently though, um, but now she's doing a whole new like color palette launch. So I don't know that you'll necessarily see this color on her website, but I just loved it. I bought two skeins of it and I was intending to make socks out of it. But you know, I put aside a little bit of yarn. I think you can see maybe kind of over that way between me and Martha there's a basket like a wire basket where I put yarn in. Oh if you're new here welcome. I moved recently so the some of the life stuff is going to be moving centric moving house centric. Um, so as I was packing and packing up my yarn I set aside quantities of yarn, like a lot of yarn that I could knit into socks or hats, some easy, easy, like no brainer projects, things that I could just go like, yes, I'm going to make that without having to think too hard about like managing like 
color or trying to figure all of that stuff out. So I had set aside a bunch of yarn. And I set this aside thinking I was going to make socks for me and maybe a hat for Julie, my granddaughter, who is two and a half. And I ended up, I don't know what inspired me, but I was saw, I, I think I was watching James, James has a YouTube channel now, and I think I was watching him talk about his sweater, this sweater in particular, and I just cast it on. I was just like, I'm doing it. Um, so yeah, and I love it. I wore it right away. I actually wore, wore it to an event, and I'll put a picture in here of me wearing it, um, styled with a denim skirt. Really, really loved it. Loved it so much that I cast on a second one out of some hand spun that I also had set aside. Um, and yeah, so the, here is another one. This is some hand spun, a DK weight hand spun that I made um, some time ago. Um, the project is about a 400 yard project and the hand spun that I had was only about 360 yards. So this came out a little bit shorter than the one I'm wearing. Um, but yeah, I, it was, it's a really fun fast knit. Um, you knit it on, I can't remember the needle size, but it's really chunky. It's been a while since I knit this, but really fun. I may do another one. I have had a languishing whip that is also a James N. Watts pattern called um, Pure Mesh, I think. It's a pullover, it's a long sleeve pullover. I love the look of it, but I was trying to modify it and I kind of bombed on the modifications. So I just like overcomplicated it. So I think I just need to make it the way he made it and go from there. So I'm gonna put this by the microphone so it might clink. Um, yeah, so I, but I love it. I would definitely make more. I would wanna, I wanna make a longer like he has um, in the instructions the way that you can make a sleeve. So you could do a long sleeve even if you wanted. Um, but I want to make like a longer, looser. Like this is pretty loose, but long, longer sleeve and maybe longer in the body. So it's a little more versatile. And black, that would be perfect. So we'll see. Either I'm going to do the pure mesh or I'm just going to make another one of these. Okay. Martha is wearing a, another whip. If you see me reaching to the to this side this way, it's because that's where my monitor is, where I can see what you're seeing. So um, it goes blank when I'm not using it. So I sometimes just need to wake it back up. Um, this is the Saml by Hoagy Locatelli, and um, it is gorgeous. There is so much detail. It is a black sweater, black sheep wool. So much detail that I don't know if you're going to see very easily in this light. Oh yeah, wait, I think you can. It's got a texture. Okay, no, you really can't see it. So I finished this before I moved um, and blocked it over at my old place. And I did not, the buttons, my button box is packed. And when I got here, I thought about taking out buttons but I was too overwhelmed for this sweater um, so I'll take care of this later on in the fall it is like we're really really it's very very hot and humid here right now so the idea of wearing this is very far from my mind so um, I'm gonna put insert some footage here where you can see the close-up details this sweater has a beautiful texture all over texture um, stitch that is really really um, easy uh, I did lose my way a couple times on the sleeves where uh, and made some mistakes which I'll try to zero in on right now so you can see it <laughs> it looks like a one by one rib if you mess up I think it's a some sort of seed stitch but I don't remember the name of it um, it also has very pretty cable a very pretty cable detail down the front you knit the front plas plackets um, as you go, so you do a garter front placket, so you don't have to go back and attach those. It's really nice. I mean, the thing about Hohe is that she really likes relaxing knits, so she doesn't ever want to work too hard. So even if you see something that's kind of complicated, it's not going to be that complicated because she doesn't want to, she doesn't do that type of knit in her, you know, in her own life. So, um, yeah, it definitely recommended. It's a fingering weight. Um, it's knit on a fairly small needle. I want to say it was a U.S. size 
three or four, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to wearing this. Oh, the yarn is from Wooly Mammoth Fibers. It was a special edition, 50% um, Heberden, 50% Black Welsh Mountain, maybe? I, if I have that wrong, I'll put it right on screen. And um, yeah, it was a, a really, a really scrumptious yarn. She did recently, this I bought that black yarn last year, she did recently release something that was similar. I don't know if you can still get it, um, but just if you are interested, it's all non-superwash local to to Emma, who runs Wooly Mammoth out of Northern Ireland, and um, the sheep I think are right up the road or near where she lives, so it's very local, and she has it locally spun. So um, yeah, highly recommend. It feels really nice. She also is really. Uh, big on no nylon sock yarn so if you're interested in that she'd be a good source for that um, and I find like shipping prices to the US from Ireland not very bad like seven eight dollars so it's not too bad even ten I would pay ten to have yarn shipped <laughs> from wherever um, so it's not it's really not too bad and she does monthly updates usually and her colors are usually season specific and very pretty. Uh, so yes, recommend that. What else do I have for you? I have been knitting socks like no one's business. So I made a video clip of that and I'm going to show you, um, take you from sock, from the last sock pattern that you saw two months ago, straight through to the socks that I'm knitting today. I thought I'd update you on my sock knitting. I have knitted quite a few <laughs> pair of socks since I last spoke to you about my knitting. Um, this pair here, this is um, from Mustache, is it Mustache Yarn? Yes, Mustache Yarn, um, self-striping yarn um, company that I was knitting on when we last spoke and I hadn't quite finished them. So now I've finished them. These are for me. This is the colorway Over the Garden Wall, which is an animated series. Oh, hi, Egg. Of course, you knew he was going to make an appearance. Anyway, animated series that is, you know, sort of spooky. It's appropriate for, I would say, like middle school age children and older. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's a cool series. I love it. Um, but yeah, the stripe <laughs> it was something that I'd been I'd bought for October in 2022 and I just never got around to doing them so those are done I think I also mentioned last time that I had ripped back oh I, I should say these are the bear paw sock pattern by Andrea Mowry and I've modified them I had modified her DK everyday sock to a DK weight um sock um yarn so <laughs> i wanted to be able to knit the everyday sock pattern in dk so i'd modified it to use a three three millimeter oh my goodness he is so distracting a three millimeter needle um and then she came out with her own version of a dk weight sock and she calls it bear paw but she uses a 3.25 and i just found that too loose and the first bear paw i made oops i'm sorry buddy having trouble with perception here the first bear paw sock pattern i made was using this yarn also from mustache this is the christmas colorway don't remember the name of it i'll put it on screen if i can find it um and I need him to move. Um, otherwise, I'm going to be here much longer than I intend. Um, I didn't like it. It was too loose. The sock was too loose on my foot. It slipped around. And I was like, you know what? I know three millimeter works for me. What um, if it isn't broke? Don't fix it. So, um, yeah. So I re-knit these using a three millimeter. And they're great. Um, the yarn did bleed a little bit. You can notice it, I think, on the white stripes. Um, that was from me knitting them, wearing them, and then ripping back and re-knitting. So, anyway. Continuing along on this same sock pattern, I was really in auto knit mode because I just didn't have the brain space to 
knit or or to think about or plan knitting. So I just had to set aside a bunch of sock yarn and just figured I can just knit socks. That's fine. I just need something on the needles. Um, so this is yarn by um, a Canadian dyer, I think. Shirley Bryan Yarn Company. Um, and she is known for her deconstructed fade sock yarn. That's what this is. So this was actually all a single skein of yarn that went like this. They connected here. There, it, there, I do have a dab left that would make this transition. But you can see here that the yarn is starting to turn blue. Um, but I just, you know, I knit till to a length that I was comfortable with and then stopped. And then I started from the other end for the second sock. Wow, you're a pain in the butt. Can you please move? <laughs> yes, okay. So I just started from one end for this toe and a second end for this toe and ended up with two different colored socks that go together, but do not match. So I haven't, it has not been sock weather since I finished those. Um, and also I should say that that color was um, a Grocery Girls exclusive color that I bought quite a while ago. I can't remember when. From there, I went to a, another pair of socks. I started to make socks for other family members. So these are for one of my sons and they ended up being shorty socks because the yarn, sorry about the jerk there. The yarn is Oink Pigments. And it's a Targi sock, so it's 100%, is it 100%? Yes, 100%, no, 90% Targi and 10% nylon. You may have that if you wish. Um, I got this yarn so long ago, probably like 2016, 2017, somewhere along there. Um, I ran into one of the owners at Indie Untangled. She was in line behind me, and then she came to my local yarn shop, um, a while after that, maybe it was 20, yeah, I would say 2017 or so, 2018 maybe, 2017 seems more like it. Anyway, the yarn is super plump and it was it was kind of a sad thing that um, the yarn was so plump because it is a fingering weight yarn. I held two strands together double to get the right thickness for DK, but it was still much thicker than a regular DK. Um, and it hurt my hands to knit it. And this was, I was working on these right around the time that I um, physically moved. So it was really, really tough to keep working on these, but I persevered and luckily they ended up being shorty socks because of the, even though if I, I would show you the label, but Egg took it under the ottoman there and I, I don't know, it may not even be legible anymore. He's more like a dog than a cat, by the way. Oh wait, oh wait, here. It came out the other side. <laughs> um, yes, it's chewed and a little wet, but um, yeah, it's 400 yards, but because of the thickness of the, you know, holding two strands together, the thickness of that fingering weight, I just didn't get the usual length that I get. Um, this, this, yes, this is a man's sock and it is bigger than my sock, but not by much. This boy's shoe size is maybe like a size or two bigger than mine, maybe one full size. Like I'm a women's size eight. He'd probably be a women's size nine or nine and a half. Um, he's a men's eight and a half. So yeah, not that much bigger. I should have been able to get a much bigger leg, but I didn't. So, and he got excited when he saw them. He loves the color. I showed them to him on FaceTime. He loves the color. So I'll be giving these, gifting them. I, I was gonna give them to him for Christmas, but I needed to make sure he'd be okay with short ones. And that brings me to the sock that I am knitting currently. I just cast it on about a day ago. Um, this is should be familiar to long-term viewers. This yarn is by Stranded Dye Works. It is old yarn. I have not seen Jude dye this color in quite a while. It is called Bat Cave, and this is an MCN. I think he had special colors back when... Yeah, that's how long, how old this is. If you've been, if you know Stranded Dye Works, at some point he changed the base names from cutesy names like these, this one was called Paradise, to actually what it is. So this would now be MCN, just simply MCN. 
in his collection. Um, anyway, haven't seen this color in quite a while. I did knit with this, though. I made a pair of socks for a friend a couple years ago, and um, yeah, I was, uh, my other two sons were over here, and I was showing them the shorty socks that I made for their brother, and I said, hey, you know, I can make shorty socks if that's appealing. One of my sons always wears shorty socks, and he said, you know, at first he said no, and then he was like, you know, that would be great. And so then I was showing them yarn colors so they could pick without really knowing what I was going to make, just kind of get an idea of what they liked and stuff. So, and he loved this one. So I was like, done. That's my next cast on. So these will go in his stocking. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to make socks for other people from the, for the next few months. We'll see what happens. But that is my sock knitting update. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I have been on this kick of these rib knit socks from Andrea Mowry for quite some time. <laughs> then DRK Everyday Sock for Fingering Weight and then the Bear Paw Sock for DK Weight. I, um, did. I did try it. I wore the one uh, Christmas colorway stripe sock a few times before I was like, mm, it's just not working for me. And I re-knit them sm with the smaller needle and they're perfect. So yeah, so I'm just continuing on. If you're curious and you want to do smaller needle the DK weight, if you've also discovered that the bear paw sock doesn't really fit you quite right and you'd like a snugger fit and you want to use a three millimeter needle instead and try it, um, I have the shoe size and the cast on that I used. I'm trying to be mindful of the that it's proprietary information so but I did have the men's shoe size and the cast on amount that I used for the sizes so and I can tell you I've made the most common sizes I think women's size 8 men's size 10 men's size eight and a half, and men's size 13 I've done those four sizes um, so you can look at my pattern my project pages on Ravelry and see the cast on stitches I generally put that in the notes um, how many stitches I cast on, um, and then what I increase to. And from there, you're just going to have to wing it. <laughs> and I think you can do it. Yeah, I think you can wing, wing it with um, using my number and following Andrea's pattern. Sometimes the stitch count matches the um, A size, so you can follow her instructions for that size for the heel. But generally, it's, yeah, you, I think you'll, you'll figure it out. Um, what else have I been making? I made, um, I was furiously making one by one rib throws for family members. Um, I made several for myself, um, in the past. And, um, after I was done making some for them, I basically made, I've knit all the colors I have in my stash of my scrap, which is, feels amazing, except for a little bit of blue and turquoise which I'm about to show you what I'm going to do with that. And a, you know, pretty, probably small size collection of burgundy wine, like red, orangey tones. Uh, so those may be destined to be something, um, some one by one, big, thick one by one ribbon. What I'm talking about are, is holding 10 strands together of, of fingering weight yarn and knitting with big needles, US size 17, 12 millimeter needles. Um, into a throw. I'm gonna have you watch the throw that I made for my cat video now. So it's not too long. Okay, I also wanted to share my one by one rib knit, chunky rib knit cat blanket that I made on a whim in about a day because <laughs> it was, it went very fast. Um, you may know that I have made several chunky knit um, scrap, scrappy throws over the years. Um, I have actually one here on my couch. And there's another there on that chair protecting it from the claws that are egg. And there's actually one right there too. So I have a lot of one by one rib knit throws. I actually really like that stitch because it's um, other than garter, it's the only like really truly reversible knit stitch that I that I'm aware of. That's also fairly easy to make. 
um, there's a little bit of a snag there. This has been well loved, this cat blanket, but I've made it since I last spoke to you and my cats really love it. The new place is much warmer than my old place. My old place had central air and that generally keeps it very cool or we have window air conditioners here. So it's a little bit warmer. They're mostly sleeping on the floor where it's a little cooler and they're not that interested in lounging on this. But I do have this, I did have this positioned on the suspension bridge. You may have noticed it in the last video. Um, and I made it because I had purchased these throw pillows for my couch and I was like, ooh, pink stripe, little pink accent. That would be cool. Because my decor in my house is mostly white with um, some green and blue and some sometimes pink or gold accents. So I have white rugs, white walls, white a lot of white furniture, um, and then some natural wood and stuff like that. So this is kind of nice, a nice little pop of color. And it's an awesome way to use up a lot of yarn, um, a lot of scrap yarn in particular, because you can just trade out a color and you can see like the color gradient there happens pretty pretty smoothly and that's because I'm just um, swapping out one color usually at a time and it's a great way to use up mini skeins or little bibs and bobs. Um, I'm planning a couple more. Let me just scooch that over. I want to do a blue green one. So I pulled out all of these like you know bibs and bobs of yarn that um I haven't, you know, that I used for some other projects, but this has just been hanging around. I have to say, like, since I made, I've made three other big one by one throws using this method. It's basically holding 10 strands of fingering weight together and knitting with this US size 17, or I think it's a 12 millimeter needle. So really, really chunky needles. Um, I don't know how many I cast on for this, but I'll talk to you about it when I, um, have this to show you. Um, but I also have, besides this bit of turquoise and blue, I have this entire bag um, of, see there's the leftover blue from those socks. Um, I have this bag of blues and greens. So I'm gonna separate them out and get like something, one that's more green and one that's more blue, I think. And I'm gonna make a couple more. So that way I can I can launder them, I can put them away, I can, you know, I can do that. And I have two cats now, so I made this one, I only had one. So I wanna make sure that there's enough of these to go around when, um, you know, when it gets cold again. So that's my, that's my thought. Plus it's so good. I'm gonna use up all of this and all of this bag as well, making these, I think. So it's really, just lovely. Oh, and what I do, like there is some DK in here, like some DK scrap. If I'm using DK, I um, count that as two strands. And you can actually go up more. Like I had a really thick hand spun that worked through here. Not one that I made, but one that somebody else made. And he's back. <laughs> he's so cute, but he's so, um, he's such a troublemaker. Yeah, so I had some hand spun that was fairly thick and I just went ahead and, and knit with it till it was gone. It wasn't a lot of yardage, as you can see, it ended about here. And it really made this side of the blanket much thicker, but it's fine. Um, it, you know, how it goes, how it goes. So yeah, that is another project update. Yes, so I'm making a couple more. I love the pink one. It's on the suspension bridge, which I think I showed you in the last video, um, in last, last, two weeks ago video and I'm gonna make a turquoise one because as you know turquoise is my favorite color turquoise and silver my favorite colors and uh, why not I should make a turquoise one I might even get three out of that I'm gonna see how it goes I'm gonna try to do a just pure turquoise one and then what see what I have left like if I got a collection of green and a collection of blue enough to make one and one or maybe I combine and do a blue green one using blue green blue and green yarns and then make a turquoise one, which is blue green. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, what else have I been working on? Oh, so I think we're into whips because I've shown you all my finished objects. So I am still slogging away on the bear paw. Um, sorry, not bear paw. 
sheep camp. I keep doing this. I want to call it bear camp, but it's sheep camp sweater by Jennifer Berg. Um, I'm on Body Island. I actually think it's, I'm not too far from finish. So yeah, I've got about three more inches. It looks like I hope the light is still okay. It suddenly got overcast and I think we're, we're having a little thunder though. The noise you're hearing in the background is definitely egg playing. Um, but yeah, this is like this really cool geometric pattern, um, and in a round yoke sweater and it is a, uh, I think it's worsted weight. I'm using Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which I think is worsted or is it a DK? And the colorway cast iron, it's a Targi Columbia wool blend. I don't see, oh, it does say worsted, okay. And then the this very fuzzy rainbow speckled yarn that is making up the yoke is a hand spun um, Angora blend um, from the Angora is from a sheep or sorry not a sheep a rabbit farm in Connecticut and then I mixed it with some merino rainbow dyed so the Angora was just its natural white gray color and uh, the Ang the merino was a, a rainbow speckle, so I did like a combo spin to get that. And combo means that you are pulling at the, um, at both, so you're holding both in your hand, so a, a little bit of the rainbow and a little bit of the floof, and I was just pulling from both of them, alternating kind of, so you end up with like a really beautiful blend of, um, of fibers to make the yarn. So yeah, I've just been, I don't know this because it's so hot and it's been, you know, it's, it's very mindless to knit the body, but I tend to kind of languish on the body when I feel like there's a long ways to go and I'm just like, I'm never going to get there. <laughs> so I kind of just knit a couple rows and put it down, knit a couple rows. And then all of a sudden I see that I'm close and I zoom to the end. Um, so that is where I'm at on that. It should be done soon. Hopefully, maybe by the next time I, I um, make an episode. But what, oh, and I have another new cast on. So um, after I was done knitting, after I finished this, I was really craving something like a color work something. And I'd been telling myself that I really needed a new pair of fingerless mitts for winter. Um, Cause I wear them all the time. And I, um, I have a pair that have some holes in them because I do wear them all the time. Like I wear them when I'm driving, I wear them, you know, uh, in, unless it's too cold to, and I need a, you know, full finger gloves. I, they're my, you know, my go-to grab, um, when I just need a little extra warmth. So I cast on the underwing mitts, which I know everybody's made them by now. It's patterns been around for quite some time for several years. Um, and I just wanted to, yeah, I wanted some color work. So I made it through the cuff and I am, um, you know, angling on up to the moth. Um, but I set it down after I moved because then it became, first I wanted something more complicated because I was killing time in the old place trying to, waiting for when I could move. And then it was too complicated because my brain was just full of too many other things so I set it aside and stopped um, working on it. Oh I forgot to tell you the yarn, the yarn I'm using is from Green Mountain Spinnery. It is their white and black. Um, it is called Music and I am using the, well I don't know why that's in there. I am using Moy Oscuro, which I think is the black, and then Blanco, which is the white. I'm not sure why the yarns have Spanish colors, color names, but they do. I'm sure there's a reason. Um, Green Mountain Spinnery is a worker-owned co cooperative that uh, is always at Rhinebeck. Um, the yarn's super affordable. I'm sorry about that annoying noise in the background. Thank you, Egg. We're done listening to you bat that ball around. Um, <laughs> he loves toys that make noise. He really does. Um, so, yeah. It's a good... They have really great prices, and they're beautiful local wools. Um, 
for a while they were the only mill that was still making yarn in the U.S., um, but luckily now we have some more. Um, so the wool industry has resurged. A little bit. A little bit. Um, what else? Oh, the main thing that I've really been working a lot on, it's like all I want to knit, and I'm almost done. I cast on another Vertices Unite baby blanket. <laughs> oh my gosh. I this I have to get used to this new setup. So in my old setup, I'm in a stool I'm sitting in a stool and my workbench is behind me. I hope the whole setting isn't too distracting. There's my yarn winder there. And yeah, all that's fixed by now. Um but yeah, Vertices Unite Baby Blanket. I am at the, yes, I'm not in the middle of a row, thankfully. And uh, here it is. So if you're not familiar, it's a pattern by Stephen West. It is, um, some people may know the shawl, but maybe you don't know, but he also made a baby blanket. This is the fourth one that I've made. Oh, I think I made a video where I talk about this. So um, I'm going to have you watch that. Maybe not. I'm going to skip that video and just talk you through it right here. Um, this is a modular knit. It's really cool and it, it it's fast moving because you're working with DK weight yarns. So you start with this center parallelogram. I hope you're seeing it as a parallelogram. I don't really have it laid out all that nicely. I don't really have room to lay it out completely. As you can see, it's dropping off the side and stuff. So anyway, you start with this and you use two colors. So I am using um, this one here. This is a uh, cosmic tie-dye by Wandering Flock. This was a single ply that I just was practicing spinning. So I made it into a two-ply DK weight because I have hundreds of skeins of single, um, not single ply, but of fingering weight yarn that I will never use. So I am trying to be creative to use them up. So yeah, that is what that is. And the other skein is some Melted Baby Suri from Ching Fiber. This was a one of a kind colorway that I've had for all this yarn I've had for years. So I am really looking for creative ways to use up yarn. And my granddaughter loves the blanket that I first made her. So, and that was more unisex color. So I thought it would be fun to make a more, um, you know, one that was colors that she likes right now. So that's what she, she loves these mermaid colors. So yes, yeah, so you start with this and then the second, um, module you do is this one. And then the, um, second, that's the second, the third, Third is either this one or this one. I think it's this one because this is, you use five colors. So this is two colors. This is color one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so then you do this and then you do this. And what I did was my, one of the colors I use both this purple color and a solid, this purple color is from Asylum Fiber. It's a one of a kind color that I got from her for a special project that I had and I had left over. And then I also use this turquoise color that's from Kim Dye's yarn that was from a leftover from a sweater that I made. Um, so yeah, so I just alternated those. I don't think I've made this pattern exactly the way Steven wrote it forever. Like I, every single time I always modify it. This is a pattern that you could easily modify. Like I have a version, I think Julie's first version where this, this big rectangle changes colors like halfway through because you're just doing garter stitch. So anytime you change color, it just looks like it was planned to be that way um, because it's all modules and geometric shapes. So it's really, really convenient. So then from after you do this, you do this, then you do this, then you do this. And you can see that Stephen has you mixing up the colors in different ways. So here's the Surrey with the pink from over there. And I actually ran out over here, these last couple rows, and I just used that um, pastel that I used over there. You can't even tell, looks fine. Um, and then this is this lime green purple one that is from Countess Blaze. Also, it was a single ply that I turned into a two ply on my spinning wheel. 
Um, and I'm on the very last section here, which is yet again, the Melted Baby Surrey with the Asylum Fibers. It's really interesting to me too, like how the colors change as you put them together. Um, so it's really, really cool. And then my plan to do the I-Cord bind, uh, bind Off, I'm gonna use this um, turquoise from Kim Dye's yarn. I have a whole other skein of it, so I absolutely have plenty <laughs> to do. Plus I'll probably have enough extra to make a hat or something um, from that. So yeah, so that is this pattern. And um, it's really fun. I highly recommend it. It's the only baby blanket I've made in the past like three years or so. Um, so yeah, that is all my knitting. Um, yeah, so I have whips wise, the sheep camp sweater, the vertices unite and a, um, the socks on the needles. And I'm going to be casting on a vertices unite shawl. It's one I've been wanting to make for one of my sons for quite a long time and I'd made a video clip about the process, how I came to pick the colors and the yarn. So I'm gonna have you watch that and then come back. I wanted to share my process of um, putting together a palette for a Vertices Unite. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because he's playing with my stuff. Um, a Vertices Unite shawl for one of my sons. It's going to be his birthday gift. And I got this um, mini skein set in a 12 day countdown from Zakami Yarn. They are a UK based dyer and they are known for their natural um, sock bases and natural. Um, this is a full skein from them and natural dyes. So natural, no nylon bases, natural dyes. And this is a, I believe it's Corydale. Yes, non-superwash, 100% non-superwash Corydale sock yarn. Um, so I went stash diving and I pulled out um, two full skeins. It turns out the pattern doesn't really use one full skein for any of the five colors. It's five colors if you're not familiar. I'll have put a picture on screen, I'm sure, by now. Um, it's by Stephen West. It's an old pattern. I've made it a few times. Uh, actually, no, scratch that. I've made it once. Maybe I've made it twice. I might have made it twice. I'm not sure. Um, but I made, when I last made one for my daughter-in-law, one of my sons, the one who I'm making this for, said to me, I love this shawl. It was not his colors, but he just loved it. He said he wanted one. So that was two years ago, almost three years ago at this point. So here I am, ready to knit through stash. And I thought it would be a great way to use some of the mini skeins from the 12 mini skeins. These are the ones I'm not using. So there's like, you know, the, the more earthy tone ones are here. I am gonna use these. I guess they're all earthy tone. Um, so yeah, these are gonna be, these will each be a color. This is going to be, um, these two will be together quite a lot. This is from a dyer, Twisted Fitch, who no longer dyes, but I just loved this shade of green from him. And I just, you know, picked it up at some point. I put, it's probably uh, a skein I've had a long, long time. It's also a single ply, which I don't buy anymore because they're the least versatile. They're great for shawls though, so I'm happy to use this. Oh, and by the way, this son, his favorite color, is this color, is green. So um, I pulled in the shades of green. This is from Life in the Long Grass. She's still dying. This was an old um, club that I had joined. It was her laneway club. So this is a Cheviot, yeah, BFL Cheviot blend. It's also supposed to be a non-nylon sock. It's naturally dyed. Um, I'm not sure if she says, I don't think she says what she used to dye this. I don't recall. I'd have to go look at the listing, but it's a sort of a minty, sagey, minty blue, or sorry, minty green. So these two will be together um, often and, or in a big part of the shawl, and then they'll be working, they're solid, so they'll be working with some of these. This is the big full skein from Zakami, the last um, package that I opened for the 2022 advent. I decided to put these four together, even though, so there, there's one color 
let me skip these. <laughs> let me go over here. There's one color in the shawl that only needs 165 yards, which will be exactly what these two are, and they together are. And they're very close in color. I think where this one goes blue-green, this one goes to that red tone, which, you know, there's one that's almost a solid red here, and there's a solid blue here. So I think that was sort of the idea, like you could make a fade with the mini skeins, but um, yeah, this, I love this idea. So that'll be the color, color C, that is the lowest amount of yardage. And if I use up all of this and need a little more, I'll just pull in one of these, the darkest one that's left, and that'll be, you know, that'll finish that out. Um, and this will be the fifth color, These, this, this group together. In fact, what happens in the beginning is that this color gets striped with this color. So I'm gonna use the two solids, even though they're different colors. I'll use those to stripe with these. And then these two will be, oh, actually I could use that maybe. Maybe that's what I was thinking, these two. I don't remember. I'll figure it out when I get there, but um, I'm gonna treat these four as a single color. So those are my five colors for the Vertice Unite. Um, I find that I've made the Vertices Unite baby blanket five times, and I find that you can mix and match colors within each module. It's a mod modular knit, so you make one module and then you do another. You do like six, seven, eight modules in each of the patterns, and I find you can mix within the module with no problem, and I've done it several times and um, it, they look great. Like you can color block within the module. So. I'm going to just embrace that and use up these mini skeins. So this will use up like six of the 12 mini skeins plus most of the full skein. So that is my uh, project planning. <laughs> yes, okay, so you have future cast on now too. Um, I do have a wee bit of spinning to share with you. It is Tour de Fleece and I believe I made a video where I show you what I'm planning to spin. So. Let me let you watch that and then come back and I will show you the yarn. It's the evening of July 1st, which is the first day of Tour de Fleece. And this is where I'm at with my spin. I haven't done a thing. <laughs> it's just been a very busy, hectic day. And um, yeah, I did a lot of other things. A piece of furniture just arrived about an hour ago. I'm going to put it together. Um, but I've been like sort of trying to figure out how to spin these or yeah, how to spin these. Um, these are all Kim Dyes yarn. Um, this one is BFL and silk, and this one is Polworth and silk, but they should hang together pretty well, even though, and these are a different color. This is a different color from these two. I think what I'm going to do is divide each braid in two and three lengthwise, because I want to make three bobbins. And then each bra each each bobbin will get a strip of this, a strip of this, and a strip of this. So then I don't have to worry about the differences in the way that these two these two were dyed. And this is um, you know completely different. It's got a lot of white in it. And then from there, I'm gonna break them down. I think I'll do some sort of fractal spin. It's gonna be a two ply. I think what I'll do with the this strip that comes from here is just kind of integrate it from time to time. I'll do like a combo spin where I'm pulling from, um, you know, a chunk of this as I'm pulling from a chunk of this and I'll just kind of blend it in. It'll just be in there. I think that's the best way to do it because um, I want to make a total of three skeins. Um, it should because with all the high silk content, it should come out to fingering weight without any trouble at all. My default seems to be sport, like kind of a heavy sport or light, somewhere in that light to heavy sport. Sometimes I get fingering if I have very fine prep and this is what I would consider very fine prep. So that's where I'm at. I'm hoping to get a little spinning, even if it's just 15 minutes, um, at, you know, in the evening here as uh, the sun is going down and I need to get that piece of furniture put together because I'm having company tomorrow and I want the house to look good, so. I will show you probably tomorrow what I did. All right, here is the yarn. I finished the skein last night. So this is this is one week's worth of spinning. I love it so much, so, so much. It came out great. Like you wouldn't even know that um, I combined two different floofs, I don't think. 
because um, it really just blended very beautifully. I mean, that one floof was turquoise and white, so it went very well with the turquoise green and pink of the other um, fle fleece that I was spinning. So, um, yeah, so I got 420 yards in 105 grams, so it's a very true fingering weight yarn. And now I just have to do the same all over again two more times and get two more skeins and I'll have 1,200 yards and enough for um, some future project. Um, I don't have any idea what I'm planning to make, but yeah, this is my tour de fleece plan and it's a three week um, a competition. So uh, I should have, you know, one, if I make a skein a week, I'm gonna be done with this. And if I happen to finish sooner, I do have um, some fiber that I left out that I will tap for, you know, single skeins probably to just finish out Tour de Fleece. Last, last segment. <laughs> I did get some yarn. I know I have so much yarn I need to work through, but I got yarn with a very specific purpose. This is for my um, DK weight socks that I'm always wanting to knit. Um, for family and friends. So I joined Ritual Dye's Tarot Card Club and selected DK, and this was July's. Um, this is 10 of Cups, July 10 of Cups. It's their Priestess Base, which is a four-ply DK weight superwash, merino wool, 250 yards. Um, yeah, it's a gorgeous pink with some neon orange speckles and some purple speckles in it. And yeah, so it was a surprise. I um, will admit I was a wee bit disappointed that it was pink because I was expecting tarot to be moody colors. Um, but it's fine. It'll work for someone for sure. And it's just that I have a ton of pink yarn, so <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of pink. All right, I did, now having said, I remember one of my viewers talking about um, mystery skeins and just saying, you know, why were well, you spending all that money? Why don't you just buy, you know, buy what you want instead of getting these mystery skeins? But sometimes mysteries are fun. I also purchased from Olan, you're gonna laugh because there's more pink here. Um, from Olan Mills, she was doing a final de-stash. So this happened before I moved. I went ahead, I felt like this was an opportunity to get some yarn that me, you might never be able to get again. Um, so I bought a mystery pack. I think, I thought it was five skeins, but I only have four here. It may have, there might've been a mohair that I took out. I'm not sure, <laughs> or a Surrey, I'm not sure. Anyway, this is what I have to show. Um, the are these are mill these three are mill this is an indie dye this is a very familiar indie dye color though to me it's called your guess as good as mine um but it, gosh it looks familiar i don't know why um it's pretty it's rust and it's got like a light blue in it and it is a um merino nylon so this is a sock yarn um, and these are 70% Cordial, 30% Rambouillet, DK weight, which is great. Um, so I got this dusty rose, like sort of mauve and this like orangey color. She said when she put the skeins together, that they would go together. They wouldn't be the same necessarily, but they would go together. Um, so I think this is DK and I think this is fingering weight. Yeah, this is 400, um, meters and 100 grams so this is very definitely fingering weight it's a really cool marl golden color mixed in with like this paprika or terracotta color and then last i got this skein of core which is 100 percent fine merino it's also dk weight and um, it's also a marl like kind of this lime green and pink which is funny because the hand spun i just did had some lime green and pink moments so yeah i yeah i'm i mean i think that these would make good socks um i actually thought about casting this on pretty quickly but then i ended up putting it aside um i don't know what i'll do with them i just felt like i had to have them so um 
yeah, so if you can expect to see two more skeins of the ritual dye I joined for three months. So August and September colorways. I hope they're more moody. Blue, greens, gray, black, those colors. <laughs> and not bright, happy um, colors just because that's the people I'm gifting to. But yeah, I mean, this will be great for my daughter-in-law, I think. Um... That brings us to life stuff. So a little update on the move-in stuff. I don't, I do, I did get the curtains. So I'm gonna show you that. Um, I'm gonna actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I will show you some clips that I took of the house. I think I showed you also the rearranging of what's behind me and. These curtains that I bought on Amazon, they're 100% cotton made in India. They are, everything i freaking love them look at them look at that little puddle at the bottom ah they are nine almost nine feet i think they're eight and a half feet long oh my god i also hung up this beautiful i mean it's the cheapest thing it's really meant for christmas holiday time i always had it behind my bed above my bed in my other apartment since like one Christmas I put it up and I just never took it down as I loved it. So I put it up here. Is this not the best color color? These are my favorite colors, silver and turquoise. I freaking love this thing. I, I think I'm still gonna put some art like up there or something. I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out, but ah, I just love this little corner right now. It looks so, so good. Oh, hi, egg. This week's project is <laughs> organizing all this crap here. Um, I'm gonna make, I need to clean out one of the closets a little bit, like re rejigger shit in that closet. So I can at least get four of these bins. I think I should be able to get four of those into the closet. And I don't mind keeping a couple out, but I don't, I don't want a big stack like that. Cause I actually wanna put art right there where they are. Like, so I have two, um, pieces of artwork that are a dyad and I want to put them on, you know, one and then the other, which I'll show you when I'm done. I have in the back right there behind the toolbox, not the black and white boxes. Those are, those are, those actually could also go in the closet, but they're pretty enough that they could sit out. Um, but these boxes here, there's three of them. They're all old photos. So I'm hoping to get those in the closet as well um, and uh, make a space, make space for the toolbox, which I'm almost done with. After I get done hanging the art, I'll be completely done with it, but I'm pretty much done building stuff. Um, and the other plan is to get this display case, this metal display case hung on the wall. Um, and it's pretty much gonna go right where it is. I think I might move it over about six inches, but it'll get hung up another, it'll be like about a foot higher than, than you see right now, maybe 18 inches higher. And uh, then I can get that organized and situated with these little things that I've collected over the years um, and all of that. So I really want to, it's not, it's not a high need, but I would really like to be able to wind some yarn. I have a couple, I, I'd like to get more socks on the needles. Uh, I finished the latest pair of socks, which are sitting next to the yarn winder over there. I'll show you later, or maybe I already did. Um, yeah, so that is the plan. I will let you know how it goes a little bit later. Thought I'd show you a little progress of what I've done with the workbench. So I was able to put four of the six uh, containers of fleece away. Um, I hung the uh, curio cabinet thing there and I got two images up. Um, in order for them to not look ridiculous, I had to uh, hang one of them a little bit low. There's egg. Um, and this is my yarn winding setup for now. Um, this, the, um, oh my gosh, what's that called? That thing that holds the yarn before you, oh my goodness, Swift, my yarn Swift is kind of in the way. I mean, it does shrink down a little bit, but I can also take it off, which it's probably mostly gonna be off. All right, yeah, I need to wind the yarn before 
um, stuff happens here. So yeah, I'll check back in with you when I get a little more organizing. I was just excited to wind yarn and I wanted to wind some yarn for socks. So that's what I'm doing right now. I still have to clean this mess down here. Oh, and clutter that was there has now moved here, but it's mostly pictures that need to get hung up. So I'm gonna do that. The plumber's coming today and he's gonna put the new vanity in. This is it, I built it yesterday. Um, I made a mistake <laughs> putting it together. It wasn't clear in the directions, but this piece right here on top where you see that and those nails and that, that should have been on the inside and then the outside would have been plain. Um, but I messed it up and it was way too late for me to take it back apart. I'd already um, screwed some things on the other side, so there were gonna be holes no matter what. So I just decided to leave it as is. But I have a plan for that, which I'll show you later um, after he installs it and stuff. So um, yeah, so that this is all my <laughs> all my bathroom stuff, not the box, but the this and this that all go in the sink. They're all out right now, so he can install the vanity, put the sink on top, install the new faucet, and do the rest of the fixtures in the bathroom. I'm hoping he can do all of that today. I'm not sure, but we'll see. The vanity is still not installed. It's still in my hallway, which I think you're gonna see. Unfortunately, it's really annoying. And I, I think all I did was hang artwork. I hang, hung some artwork around. Um, I've been really, really fried, I have to be honest, about um, just I needed a break. I took a few days off and went to a friend's house um, in upstate New York for the holiday, for the 4th of July holiday. And I just, like, when I came back, I pretty much just laid on the couch all day the next day and did nothing around here aside from you know general life stuff like cooking like ha preparing meals taking care of the cats and that stuff it's been really really hard I don't I have not felt so alone in needing to do something like ha trying to do something and feeling very alone since I got a divorce and that was 28 years ago <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was, it, you know, it's really been challenging and I know like challenging times really help you show you who you are. Um, but you know, it's, it's still hard to push through. So it's been, you know, not to end on a downer because overall, like it's really a wonderful thing to be living on my own. Um, I do really like it. I like the freedom that I get living alone. But um, it's lonely. Can be lonely at times. So um, I just need to work on that, like getting back, like getting my head out of trying to fix this place up because it's just going to take time and I can't do it all overnight and get back into my social life. So I need to get social, get to be social again. I mean, I moved closer to New York City so I could be social with my friends in New York City. So um, just hoping that, um, yeah, that that, or make new friends. Maybe I'll make new friends. I have to look for a knitting group near me because I don't know if there are any. <laughs> I'm sure there must be. I know I can go to Nitty City, that's not too far. Um, but I would rather if there was one like in the neighborhood, in my neighborhood something like that um but yeah i mean i love it here i love the neighborhood so much it's really cool um it's very city-fied like i needed milk the other day and instead of doing a panic order to you know through amazon fresh direct or whatever i went up the block and got myself some milk <laughs> and it was something i could never have done where i lived before and um that was really nice it was nice to be able to do that and um you know there's any type of food that i want walking distance and like think fill in the blank Hispanic food South American any South American country food and that is in this neighborhood Venezuelan Peruvian Brazilian Chilean all of those are Mexican all over here um yeah every, every, probably any any anything you could think Colombian there's a few Colombian places, lots of Cuban places too, because this neighborhood had historically been Cuban. This is where when after the um, Cuban um, airlift out like when all of the Cubans got lifted when Kennedy pre President Kennedy lifted 
all the Cuban, a lot of the Cuban population and brought them here. They came to Miami or New York and so, and New Jersey really here, this area. So it's a very heavy Cuban area, mostly second, third generation now. Um, but yeah. So that, you know, kind of gives you the idea, the vibe of my neighborhood. I love it. And there's still some old school Italians around and um, other ethnicities too, other European ethnicities. A lot of people live in this very diverse neighborhood. So it's really, really nice. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have anything else to share. So I'm going to leave this here. Um, I do, you know, I might, I did have another segment that I was doing at the beginning of the year here where I was talking about woolly myths. I might get back to that. I might not. I'm not sure. Um, I'm just trying to kind of let myself, um, you know, feel my way instead of creating rules. I'm trying to just let myself sort of be what I want to be and let this channel be what it wants to be through me and not force anything right now. So anyway, be well and um, hang in there with your own trials and tribulations, I'm sure. I know we're all going through our own stuff and I hope that this episode brought you a little bit of joy and a little bit of relief from whatever pressures of life you might be experiencing. And um, I will see you again real soon. Take care. Bye.